Professor Guisa is a professor of entrepreneurship at JKU Art. He is the former chairman of the Investment Promotion Center, former chairman of the Kenya Investment Authority, former chairman of the Kenya Paraplegic Organization, former chairman of the African Technology Policy Studies Network, AP, ATPS, and he is the current chairman of the African Agribusiness Incubators Network, AAIN. And he is also the current chairman of Kukubora Limited. Mm -hmm. Professor Wisa has authored six entrepreneurship books. Six, not that, books, not just papers, books. It's a great achievement. Let's appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. He is also a consultant and has consulted for very, very many organizations, including the United Nations Center for Regional Development, the African Union, East African Bureau for Animal Resources, AUIBA, the African Confederation of uh, Cooperative Savings and Credit Associations, ACOSCA, and the Kenyan Union of Savings and Credit Cooperatives Limited. He has been a consultant for these international, regional, and national uh, organizations. He has published very, very widely. And if you'd like to see some of his publications, you can visit his website at www.professorbuisa.com. You can also check him out on YouTube by just punching Henry Buisa. You can agree with me that there was no better person to give this keynote address than Professor Henry Buisa. Let's put our hands together and welcome <laughs> Professor Buisa to come and give us the keynote address. also uh, say that I was privileged to be asked to come and talk to you. The pleasure is actually mine. I was telling my brother, Dr. Kiambi, that uh, I know that when I go away, I will be richer than when I came in. And they have said it, interaction, sharing, you know, it makes us even better. So, to me, I think I benefit more than, than you. You can see this, uh, I don't know whether you want to call them paparazzi. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is going onto the internet. It's going onto my website. And the people will see that I was interacting with colleagues. And therefore, I'm gaining. <laughs> uh, indeed, when I was asked to come, and uh, talk to you. I was wondering whether I'm coming to make a speech, a talk, an address. But then when I looked at the participants, I saw we are all researchers and some majority are students. Then I say, let me make a lecture. So you can convert this conference hall into a lecture hall. <laughs> And therefore, you will be listening to me from that point of view of a lecture rather than a talk and all that. So you see the theme. The people who sat down and looked at this thing, I think, they had, they had a foresight. It's a very good thing. Promoting research, innovations, and publications. But for what? For academic excellence. And I was given my title strategies for strengthening the capacity for research innovation and publications the key word is strategies you have heard the DVs talk about strategic plan in that strategic plan there are strategies 
And the strategies cannot do without a goal. And I think the DBZ ably mentioned it. If you don't have a goal, indeed, if you don't know where you're going, then any road will lead you there. Or you'll go nowhere, because you don't know where you're going. So the goal is important. And the goal is you might have so many strategies, but you have to select which one. Probably not select, but elect. And if you choose the right strategy, then you are on the right path. If you choose the wrong strategy, you are indeed on the wrong path. Being researchers, allow me to talk the language of research, conceptual framework. So let me conceptualize the topic, the title that I was given. And my understanding, my working definition of a conceptual framework are those. An outline of possible courses of action, a representation of your synthesis of literature, a mapping of actions, or your understanding of the research that you are doing. And therefore, I wish to use this conceptualization to set the stage for my lecture and at the end of the day attempt to make now those strategies that we can use. That's a familiar diagram. In this theme, there are three independent variables, research, innovations and publications. And the dependent variable is academic excellence. So we're saying academic excellence cannot be without those three. You can see the cost and effect paradigm here, isn't it? Yes. We can see that research, innovation, and publication leads to academic. academic. And that's what the, my brother can be said here. And we have stressed research, research, and research. And I know as researchers, you're going to say, huh, what's the operationalization? Yes, I've done it. I've partially operationalized them. Research will be the quantity and the quality of new knowledge. And I think you said it. New knowledge. Your research must bring out new knowledge. What gaps? You talked about gaps. What value are you adding? So we are going to partially measure your research by the quantity and the quality of new knowledge that you have generated. Innovation is tricky, but we are going to look at what's innovation, what patents, what copyright. When you write a book, you get that copyright, doesn't it? How many copyrights are there? That is a weak link in many universities, including my own. Public, uh, publications. Again, the quantity and the quality of articles in refereed journals. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that we have a journal here and it's refereed. So it is uh, a place that you can publish and that will lead to the excellency which can be measured in all those uh, uh, operationalized items. Economists who are here, business, I'm told we have uh, business related here. We know of uh, the concept of the circular flow of income, and I want to use that concept and see whether it relates and how it relates to the theme and my conceptualization of this uh, conference. We are told that in the economy, we have farms and we have households. People work in farms to earn an income. The why is income? You work. Colleagues who are working here, you're earning your salary. So this is a farm. We're getting our incomes. It goes to the households. But that income must go back to the farm if the farm has to continue producing, isn't it? So it is you and me who now dictate the circular flow some we consume, the salary that we get. Some we save. And what we consume, 
What we say, if you are saving the bank, the bank invests somewhere, isn't it? So you find that your consumption and investment goes back. And until that circular flow goes on, if you cut any link there, you come to a standstill. And I want to relate this to the theme and the variables of this conference. So let me relate this to the theme of this conference. You have seen that, this thing? We are saying this university depends on money. I mean, we have to pay, we have to buy all this to produce knowledge. Now let's see, research. Research converts the money into knowledge. He has told somebody one, I don't know how many millions. That money is going to be used in research to generate. So research is very important. The money that we have here in the university, we are teaching you, we are doing research so that we generate knowledge. What we do with the knowledge? Either publish it, it's now the second variable. The first variable is research. Now we can publish it. And the publication, therefore, places knowledge in the public domain. But how about innovation? Innovation turns knowledge back into money. So if we're not innovating and patenting and selling those bandits and we are, we are not supporting the money making of the university. The university can grant. Well, it can depend on your well wishes. But we have to do our own. So this is now the circular flow of research, publications, innovations, as far as the university is concerned. This was my own conceptualization. I don't think that you'll you get it in any uh, literature, but you can now start quoting it. <laughs> <laughs> now, each of those, each of those variables have their key determinants. And this is determinant that we're going to look for in your, whether you are doing research, whether you are publishing, whether you are innovating. For research, the key determinants are the quantity and the quality of the masters and PhD students. Are these students quality enough to go out there and do that research? Colleagues, are we imparting the proper, even methodology of doing research? I'll touch on it later on. The type and quality of research. Is a PhD student just going out to do the descriptive study just to describe? Are we just married to quantitative research, which is generally not knowledge building? Qualitative research is knowledge building, hypothesis building, but the quantitative is knowledge, I mean theory testing, hypothesis testing, isn't it? <coughs> When we do our quantitative right, we start with the hypothesis. But in qualitative right, we, we end with the hypothesis, isn't it? So what type of research are we doing? Determinants of innovation will be the university research and innovation policy. I'm happy the DBC has told us that in this university, to be promoted, you have to show that you have published. This is very good. I want to add that next time you should show that you have patented. Publishing alone is the first step. Uh, Dr. Jack was telling me, this is a Negro. <coughs> Start with what you have. I said, yes, the Chinese have said it. That a journey of? I don't know. Start with the first step. So we are starting. Let us not throw the baby. The, the, the water, whatever. I, I, I know it not. <laughs> and for publication, even as we are being urged to publish, key determinants, university publications policy. And I'm happy, from what the DBC said, it is here. 
you are not going to be promoted very fast if you have not published. Those who have published, we get it. That's a good policy because it pulls up. It, it pulls us towards that excellence. But it's also the quantity and the quality of the journals that you publish. If you're going to publish in Daily Nation, it's also publication. You are reading public, <laughs> but scholars might say ah, no. So let me open up the first independent variable, research. This is how I look at it. The R in my research means the governance a problem. Indeed, you cannot go to research when the gap that the gap said is not there. Many times I see students coming to me, say, showing me a title, and even call it a topic. You know, there's a difference between title and topic. <laughs> go to my YouTube and I've, I've, I've enumerated those those uh, different today. I, is this good enough to do research? That is already a very wrong start. The start is what Dr. Kik, I mean Dr. Kiam said. What gap, what problem? What, so the R in my research is problem. Then the scope, you know, you're not going to solve. There's a problem, but you may not be able to address the entire, so you must, the scope of that problem, measure it and then set up your objectives. Go to the field and explore the facts. Come back, and this is what you have done. You have analyzed the information that you gathered. Analyze it, you'll make recommendations. You'll conclude, but research is continuous. It is like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. When you finish, fulfill one level, another one sets in. You can see, ladies and gentlemen, fellow researchers, that we are suggesting here, research is a process. Research is a process, and it must start with a question or a problem. So if you are just going to do research for the sake of research, then you are not helping us. You must do research to address a problem, and when now the government starts coming to pack university to get some of these recommendations they can implement it, then we shall say our excellency is being achieved. That is a scholar, our own son, Calestas Juma, our own Kenyan son, very prestigious in Harvard University. Is flying the flag of Kenya up there. And he says, universities have limited research funding, particularly Kenyan universities we're talking about. We have limited research funding. And this, he says, is partly because much of the available research funding goes to national institutes, RDs and all that. If the government is not, uh, uh, if the government and, and for even the the, the, the CTAMs, the, the sponsors, are not giving us, we must do our own also and contribute. It's called cost sharing. We cannot always depend on them. So, and he says one of the impacts of this separation is that teaching is conducted without state reliance on new research. What Dr. Kiam talked about, the yellow professors, yellow page, yellow paper professors. Someone comes with a paper that he, I mean, the note that he made, and my BBC says he was in KU, I was also in KU. In KU we had a few of those. <laughs> Things have changed. They are not changing. I remember one time, um, not, not that long ago, I interacted with one of my colleagues, these parallel programs, and were teaching uh, executive MBA, people who are actually already practicing. And uh, this gentleman, a, a CEO, comes and uh, talk about the concept of Mumbwa. We're talking management and leadership styles. 
So you talk about the cause of Mumba. And my colleague, Kes just basic, said, don't bring foreign items here, foreign one. Because he has not been researching. He does know that the Mumba exists now. Management by walking around, isn't it? Management by objectives is now. Because he was still, still teaching and well, this is a, a, a parallel degree program. I, I mean, a CEO said, then I'm wasting my time here. Because the way we are teaching him what is already. So research, like he said, and Kalestas Juma says exactly that. That if me, colleagues, we are not going to, re, I mean, we are not conducting research, our knowledge will decay over time. Some of the challenges facing uh, our uh, universities in terms of research, low levels of funding is recognized, lack of research infrastructure, libraries, modern libraries, ICT, lack of qualified human resources. I can tell you for sure that, for example, as at the public universities, because of the fast expansion, whatever, we take anybody part-timers from the uh, civil service, they are not yet done teaching pedagogy as such. They have come to tell stories and not to teach. You know, teaching is not just telling a story, isn't it? So, universities are splitting two things. You have seen uh, the hammers falling on uh, my own university, the Rwanda campus, the uh, Arusha campus, this one. No, we are splitting two things. So thin that we are not able to meet, so we have been cautioned. The privately sponsored programs are pulling staff from research to moonlighting. There is poor university industry linkages. So that the gap that my brother here said, we don't know what the industry needs. And if we don't know what the industry needs, we shall not address their problems. Sometimes I wonder. I, they employ our graduates on management trainee basis. What is it that we did not train them that we are training them? Suppose we collaborated and we told them what you are supposed to teach them, then the cycle will be shorter, isn't it? Yes. So those, there's poor implementation of policies on intellectual property. That's nation. Some of you will know that our Kikuyo and the Kamba ladies at Karyoko toys to make a Kyondo. But that Kyondo was taken by the Japanese because of the intellectual property system here. You know? At, is it scientific? And they ask this lady, what do, you, what do you mean? When you pour in grain, it does not fall and pour the grain. Can you explain that scientifically? Mama Nasema, Mimi Najua Iki to Kiweka Hita Mbuka, you Najua. And then the Japanese comes and dissects a perpendicular and an angle, and then another, and then you see this feeder angle, and this empty angle, when the forces, and he gets it. Our IP policy, how can we take care of those? And I know most of you have seen the papers here. Most of you have been covering the, some of the informal sector, some of broken families. Those are areas that we might not be so scientific in, but why don't we address this policy so that even my papa, my mama, who has those intellectual property can be taken care of the policy. That is a problem. Poor alignment of research to national uh, development policy. I don't know how many of our universities take the national development plan and then use it to generate research. Poor management, monitoring and evaluation. Now, these problems are not identified by myself. These are problems identified by the Commission for University Education. And therefore, we can still go back to them and say, now, how can we collaborate? How can we help us so that we address these problems? And low impact of university research. This word impact is tricky. And I've seen, I've looked at the papers here. More than 41% of the papers are either influenced effect or impact. 
I will talk about it later. <laughs> Starting an impact has a certain methodology, and I hope it was followed. So we shall talk about it later. So it is very, particularly the counseling and psychology, it is it's key. And in fact, all of them, all, all the papers in the session three are either influence, impact, or effect. It's very important. But how you go about it might also be more important than just putting the impact or influence. Our own scholars from Kenyatta University, that is Felista Njuguna and Florence Itegi, did the research sponsored continental, and they also found the following problems, insufficient attention and resources by institutions of higher learning, preference to synthetic research rather than innovative and creative research, you know, poor remuneration of researchers, so that they say, well, let me moonlight rather than do research. But as they were saying that, they added, however, use of ICT will make the research. So there's a silver lining. Even among all these problems, you have technology that are we using it. So there is therefore need. If you are not able, there's need to encourage partnerships between private and public institutions. And this is an unexploited opportunity. And therefore we remain poor. But my poor is not lack of the money that you are saying the poor means no money. My poor is we are always passing over opportunities repeatedly. Those opportunities that are out there in the industry, in CITAM, the sponsors, in is it the Canadian one? Those opportunities that are there, probably I'll talk about one or two later. So we are poor because we do not identify the gaps that uh, my brother talked about. We don't address a gap we are doing research for the sake of research. There was, in January this year, there was what they call the Kenya's First Chancellor's Convention. And it was addressing Kenya's sustainable development needs. And it was agreed that it re we require to go beyond the traditional model where universities focus on generating just knowledge. The variable innovation must now come in. That knowledge that we have generated, if we are addressing a real gap, then we can now convert that knowledge into an improvement. Innovation is simply adding value to what is existing, isn't it? So we are saying, even as you present your papers here, can you see if there is anything in it that we can convert into practicality, rather than just us reading it in referred journals. We read it, they gather dust on the, in the libraries, but there is so much value in it. So we are saying, can we go beyond that? In other words, that you brought in innovation. That's why I say, really people who thought about this and brought out those independent variables, and particularly injecting in innovation, that was great thinking. Now let me revisit our conceptual framework. That is how we write, some of us write conceptual frameworks. That the independent variables lead to the dependent variable. Look at it properly and look at that statement. If you want to go fast, walk alone. Can you see a silo effect here? Walking alone. Look, research is walking alone. 
to academic excellence. Innovation is working alone to academic excellence, and publication is working alone. I say thumbs down. I am shy to do my conceptual framework in that version. This is how I will do it. This is the difference. So that when you are now analyzing, yes, you will analyze research in relation to academic excellence alone, innovation, publication, then you will come back. Say research combined with innovation, research combined with publication, it becomes now what we call a combination, isn't it? So that you know, look at that one. That one was when you do just research and then you leave it there, isn't it? You don't know how research interacts with innovation to do to that, isn't it? So I am a preacher in terms of research. I am a preacher against that model of doing our conceptual framework and I fell in love with this one. And I am, who am I to tell you about what the Philippians say? <laughs> United. So if you want to go far, work with others. If you want excellence to be achieved, let all those come together, isn't it? You can see the wisdom of the people who generated this thing. You can see the wisdom. That they say these three must work together. God, if not united, and therefore it keeps a challenge. And it's us, we shall be challenging them now. Challenging them now, now that you have talked about this, can you generate the infrastructure, the condition, the environment for innovation? And we shall see whether or not we can do it. So this one, I give thumbs up. But you see, I'm entitled to my opinion as a research, isn't it? Yeah. I don't have to force it down your, your throat. If you love the other one, well and good. But for me, I love this one. Now let's do, let me now look at variable number two, innovation. The very purpose of innovation is to change things, to add value, to move processes forward. to disrupt the status quo. Innovation for the sake of innovation is a misuse of a very powerful and beneficial tool. In entrepreneurship, we say innovation is creative destruction. You destroy something, but you replace it with a better thing. You don't destroy it and leave it. And that is the pillar of entrepreneurship, the single pillar of entrepreneurship is innovation. Refusing the status quo and saying we want a better so that it's always progress upwards. And for the letters of innovation therefore, I say can we initiate new ideas which are needed for offering value and some tangibles that are improved, but also observable for the purpose of net. What are the net results? Is there something added? That's how I conceptualize my innovation. The research that we're doing, we are sitting down and saying, through your literature review, saying, what am I going to add? The gap, that gap that we're told is extremely important. If there's no gap, then why are you repeating it? The Vice Chancellor of Nairobi University had that given uh, the forum that I talked about. He had this to say Innovation will not just happen, rather, it takes disciplined, focused, and dedicated effort to identify the gaps I keep repeating. That's a magic word in research, a gap. And then the publication. Those are magic words, magic gaps. I mean, magic words. Gaps in society. Particularly you people who are supposed to go there and fish the net. 
Not that I cannot feel. But I'm saying this university, being a Christian university, has more responsibilities than the ordinary university. The gaps in society, generating alternative ideas, managing these ideas, developing prototypes, those are the words of Professor Peter. Let's not do innovation for the sake of innovation. But why for the World Intellectual Property Organization identifies challenges facing innovation that we are focusing more on the publication than in patenting. Now that we have been publishing and we're going to publish, let's now go a step further and say, can we also, out of this publication, can we generate something and patent it? The intellectual property seems to be new to most universities. Even at my own university, Mokenyak University, it's only one or two years back that we thought, we said we want the IP. Because these administrators here, including myself, wherever, where I am, we say that if a student and a teacher has been doing research using facilities of the university, laboratory of the university, and as a teacher has been paid a salary, then everything that you produce must, you know, we're not consultants, isn't it? When you are a consultant, you are paid. Everything, even the raw data that you are using must go to the, the client. And that way, it killed disclosure. Because I, why am I disclosing? The end, the patent is not going to be mine. Because I'm a work of the university. Until, so that IP being new, we need to address it. There are weak linkages between institutions among themselves and even industry. We have a sister institution here, USIU. Have we linked so that probably if our universities, I mean our library is weak, we can those linkages. I know I, I, I part-time at the USIU. I, 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 I actually established that entrepreneurship unit at USIU. And it had a lot better library facilities than Jomo Kenyatta. Then I had to request that even our students could be going. Because I was teaching it, they allowed. So that, those collaborative linkages, lack of skills and infrastructure required for technology transfer. We are going to have our publications here, our uh, research findings here. Now suppose we convert them into innovations. Do we have a facility here? We have um, uh, infrastructure here. This is what we should be now. You know? University is therefore seen as an ivory tower where we have those yellow, pink professors. Question therefore is there is need for an active, functional technology transfer office, what we call TTO. This is an example of Harvard. You can see on the extreme, on my, on my right is the faculty, and then there's industry, and then they meet somewhere in the middle. That means the faculty go to the industry, the inter then they have even what you call industry desks. It's like we have got into, let's say, Park has gone into a relationship with Bitco, and Bitco has given a desk to Park. So our professors and our students go there and address particular problems there. They come and do it, and then they produce a joint project, a joint innovation, and they pay. If we are doing industry research, the only problem, and this, uh, my brother, I tell you, a living example that I experienced in the Joma Kenyatta University, uh, the Germans who eat, who import most of the pineapples from uh, Thika, what is this? Uh, Del Monte. They found that the, the packages of those, I mean, inside those tins 
when they opened them, it was rusting. You know, we grow pineapples here, but I don't know how many of you use it, the pudding or whatever. It is mostly exported. And therefore, that rusting in the inside of the tin started killing the market. And our students, Jomo Kenyatta University, identified that. And they said, we can do something. We can do research to improve the packaging. They went, walked into uh, Del Monte. They talked to the relevant uh, sections. And they were allowed, yes, if we can do it, that will be very good. But now, the, the, the students have to write a proposal and come and defend it in this forum for it to be funded and all. And then in that proposal at the end, we say methods of dissemination. And that these students say publications, open forums, what Del Monde just walked out and left. You are doing research for us and going to publish it so that our competitors get it. So there's the culture, the university culture, and the private culture are different, isn't it? So much as we must keep our culture of university, university, what is university? Universality, isn't it? We must share, isn't it? But once we now start getting those interactive and test, then it's like an MOU. Get an MOU and say, well, don't, they are not everything must be done. Now we have lacked that. Because we push for publication, the various journals and all that, and if the private sector says no, you can't. So, let's again revisit my circular flow and see now where that can come in. We have our university, we have our research, we have either knowledge converted to innovation or publication. But now there is a gap that money is not come back, coming back to university. And this is the gap that we, are, we should be addressing now. We should be setting up a mechanism. Let's call it a technology transfer office, for example, that helps the knowledge innovated. We shall sell patents, we shall have spin-offs and all that. Now that is the missing gap as far as I'm concerned for many universities. That we do it, you'll publish here, you'll have done, it will go. We do not. So these are some of them. When we do that, then we create an entrepreneurial university. You don't have to be teaching entrepreneurship to be entrepreneurial. Innovation is the pillar, the single pillar of entrepreneurship, isn't it? You are already entrepreneurial. You are already innovative. There are so many things you have read about Park University without even knowing it. So, such a mechanism, if we have your DVC researchers here, for example, under him, we can have the research strategy committee, and I can see it in, in my brother here, it's already here. But probably now we can start thinking of the office, the TT office, that will be linking with the KIPI, the Kenyan, whatever it can be, a sector within your desk, isn't it? Then the KIPI will give us the guidelines of what type of research will be required. And then we come as now our teachers, we say, research we're going to do, project we're going to do must adhere to these guidelines. I may want to stop here and say, these two girls are my students, my students of entrepreneurship. I don't set written exams. I refuse the queue because if I'm teaching the entrepreneurship is not first class entrepreneurship will not give you. I give them projects and projects that they will come and present that are viable. These ones presented a project on video taking and I said fine. Now I'm going to be testing you. Wherever I go, you'll go and get videos and then they will go, we, we shall have a panel to test them and that is the exam. <laughs> they are now finalizing. They have made a few videos. Then I'll get probably put it to the video houses and say, Is this a possible uh, uh, business for this? 
say it's viable, not viable, then their first class owners or pass will be awarded according to that. Amen. So when we have an office like that inside my brother's uh, office, because we don't have to start by putting an eye, you know, we are too thin. You know, the two gentlemen here, the top person, TV is over there, the wing, that is, that is what we'll do. The, the funds, uh, the funds that we have applied for, they will conduct the research, they make inventions, and they, now that office will obtain IP, and that IP, we can now establish our rights, isn't it? Yes. And then it goes up, licensing rights, and then it generates funds and the cycle. So our circular flow is here with us. And those are some of the missing gaps. That same technology transfer office will be addressing that bottom one, the capacity. That's what you told me you're asking about capacity building, isn't it? Yes. That is the capacity that you will be beefing up so that the circular flow of knowledge, research, is life. And ladies and gentlemen, it appears that the industry is already ready for us. It's us who are not ready for them. At the same same conference, this is Buana Engineer Johnny Tanui, the concert city, you know it, isn't it? They are saying, where are the universities? Look, the academic fraternity has a responsibility to ensure that university programs incorporate practical experiences that might, these are the words of the boss of CONSA. So run there. And the research, like he says, research is not, it's not just the tangible things, it's also the services, also, isn't it? Yeah. You know, how well do you treat customer case also? So we, if we went there, and you came and presented it, and probably will be sitting here, what will stop him by saying, come? If we're sending our students' attachments there and go to attachment with an objective. Remember, God, isn't it? To me, when students go out for an attachment, I give them an objective. Go first, first look at the theory that we've been studying in the class and see whether they are applicable or not. And I see what is it that they may be doing wrongly that you can now, you generate your research problem based on that finding and you can, by the time you finish, you present, they will be your employers. Because you have tailored, you have tailored your research and that's what we're being taught. And finally, they publish or perish. To publish, we know it, is to make content available to the general public. And the potential attractiveness of a paper journal, even as the DVC encourages you to publish, it is like in project management, we say the three constraints of project management, the quality, the time, and all that. The topic your area, has it value? Is it going to make value to the larger community? That's how we shall judge you. Quality and the number of references. If you're just going to quote nation, you know, those of you who have, I did ask who knows me, they have been reading my article on the nation. I have a, a story on that also, nation, standard, and all that. But if you just go to Buisa in nation, Buisa in Buisa, then some scholar in the U.S. doesn't know who is, what is nation, isn't it? Yeah. But above all, ladies and gentlemen, researchers, the methodology. You know, there are some people, tell me, they crazy, they don't go, they don't go to, I know. <laughs> Every homo sapien is a political animal, so I'm also political, <laughs> and even you are political. We have two big camps in Kenya now, political, the NASA and the Jubilee. There is one that is saying, the process to the end doesn't matter, we, are, we, we need the numbers. The other is saying, the, the, the method you use to read the numbers is important. If I'm a Malima and I'm teaching you a formula of how to arrive at 
and then you bring me an answer without a formula question, isn't it? If you are going to publish a paper and tell me that these are my results, I want to be very keen to see how did you arrive, what methodology did you use. And therefore let me a word or two on the 41% of the titles I have here, influence, impact, let me just take anyone in at random, the impact of family instability on teenagers self-concept. As soon as I see that word impact, suppose you have brought me that I've been given that paper for me to review. What goes in my mind is impact is a result, isn't it? And it's a result of an intervention. Something happened and therefore we're seeing the result, isn't it? So I say, what was the situation like before, isn't it? And therefore, what is the situation like now, isn't it? Yeah. Now, if I don't see the before and the after, I'll not pass that paper. Because you have thought of impact, isn't it? Yeah. The impact means something has changed. And if it has changed, I move from A to B. I want to see A first, isn't it? We now say the influence, and there are many influences here. If I say the influence of university on my kids, I say, before my kids went to university, they were different, isn't it? They have now gone to university, this is the influence. So you can never miss a before and after. In your doing your impact, you're doing an effect, you're doing an effect. So as soon as I see your paper, and I go, what methodology did they use? Then I dismiss it. Because you have not come with impact. Another thing, when you're doing, let's say, impact, you are, ideally you are saying what would have happened if this was so it brings in what we call control group isn't it? if you are talking of something like, like I'm talking about here again, the impact of family instability first of all, probably I am going to take two families one that has been stable throughout, isn't it? and that, that one that has been unstable isn't it? and I measure the difference and then you see the stable families are behaving like this, and stable families, so the control group cannot be avoided. And if I'm doing just one family, then I'll say, this family must have been stable one time, and then they have become stable, and now this is what we're seeing, isn't it? So you see, the methodology, the research methodology is important. And that's what we look for when we're reviewing. That the results that are being given, what they arrived at, I don't know what you call systematically or systematic. What was the word? Systemic or systematic. <laughs> and there we are. Publish or perish. And then there is this one here at the bottom here saying, he published but he perished on the same. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> the time I go publish or perish is good, but I say in academia we have to publish. And I don't, I don't need to step on that for so much. And then, as I draw to my conclusions, uh, there is this University World News, which looked at Kenya, and they say, why do Kenyans not publish? Some of us complain of lack of time. We don't have time. Excessive number of exams to create. We have too many marking to do. Supervising so many Students, I have 20, you know, 15 masters and 5 PhDs. We are in fact violating the professional standard. Because if these 15 are all with a different topic, and the 5 are also different topic, and we are still teaching, are you doing quality work? It's very difficult. And that this is what is facing us in Kenya. You know, low faculty wages. I know you are not uh, Wasu, but we in Wasu are still fighting. <laughs> but I met some uh, colleagues were saying, fight, fight, fight. We are behind you in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> so we are saying that the publish of perish concept that uh, my brother here talked about, you must begin with an idea, <coughs> do the research, then write and publish. 
You can say it every time. If you don't do it right, you'll perish. You can <laughs> But then coming what the TVC told us, this as though we were communicating by these two guys by telepathy. He says the goal, the vision. You can see. And again, who am I? You are better to know what Proverbs say. 2918. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And therefore you convert that talk to begin, have a vision, and then learn, experience. I'm just repeating what our DVC told us. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I've come to my uh, specific task that I was asked. Strategies for strengthening capacity for research, innovation, and applications, and I want to say in PACU, that is the goal, to strong research, strong innovation, and strong publication at the CU. And I am here at Kulenga Kidogo, you can see I'm throwing that so that I hit the bull. And we all know with management, for example, that we are talking of strategies, we are talking about the TV about strategic plan. And one of the ideal model for strategic planning is what I've shown out there. And there is one tool that is very important in strategic planning, the SWOT analysis. If you have not done the SWOT analysis, then your strategies might be upside down. So what I did, I attempted a mini SWOT analysis for this university. Mini. This university has strengths. That was what? Fully accreditation, that's a strength. Solid governance structure, that's a strength. Internal quality assurance, I've seen it. That's a big strength. There are a few universities. I now don't want to mention those. <laughs> you know? You have campus teaching centers. That's a strength. You have solid programs. Few as they may be, but they are solid. I've seen them, I've gone through them. We've just talked about one, the few, whatever. Above all, this university has a clear vision and a clear mission, and I think somebody mentioned those are our strengths. But of course, we cannot be without weaknesses. We still have an infant research culture. This is the first step, as I'm told. So this is still infant. That's a weakness we need to up it, isn't it? We have, sorry, we have a weak research-related HR policies. We are still shaping them. We have inadequate research funding. Thank God we have now, I don't know, those millions that we want. But that could be a drop in the ocean, you see? We have weak university industry linkages. None of us, even Jomo Kenyatta University, we still have weak. And then the infrastructure, the infrastructure is not as good one. So those are weaknesses. But we have opportunities out there. Your sponsors, Satan, Pau, and others. That's an opportunity that we should grab. We're already doing it, we can do it even more. We have the solid local industry. After 26, we shall still be okay. You know, yesterday they talked about, they said they, they want, you know, the CAPSA. You know? But we have other universities, we have a sister university here. I say this is mini, I just, what I could capture, but if you want a full one, if I have a better example to do it, go ahead. We have threats, stiff competition, university education. Matiang comes in and disrupts the whole. <laughs> now the private universities are struggling to get some, isn't it? Because of the Matiang, Matiang phobia. Stringent regulations. There are stringent regulations in out there. The Commission of University Education has those very strict. The other day I was working with the 
this university at the political road, what do you call it? KCN. KCN. And there's this American who has come in and produced a wonderful entrepreneurship program. And when he went to be uh, approved by the Commission of Humanities, then they rejected it because it doesn't have exams. So, an entrepreneur, yes, an entrepreneur can come up with first class owners, but that doesn't prove that he's going to, have to start a business, isn't it? Those stringent universities can even kill the progress of this. Then, of course, the general economic. Now, ladies and gentlemen, SWOT analysis is not limited to just enumerating the elements of those. Unfortunately, that's what we mainly do. I don't know my colleagues who teach business how they do it, but this is how I do it. We now have to match. Look at that. This is what we call maxi maxi strategies. We want to use our strength the maximum to tap the opportunities to the maximum, isn't it? So we look at ourselves. Look at, for example, strength number three, internal quality assurance. Strength number four, campus teaching centers. Strength number five, solid programs. And then opportunity number one, sponsors. What's wrong with us, those business people starting business programs for all the churches of Sitam, isn't it? Yeah. The, the youth are there, the people going to retirement are there, isn't it? We do it for them and we generate income, isn't it? And of course, it is said, lazy hands make for poverty, someone can finish. But the diligent hands bring wealth. Those are proverbs, isn't it? Yeah. Are you going to be lazy? No. no. How about mini maxi? We want to minimize the weaknesses so that we are able to tap the opportunity the maximum. Look at them. Why don't we create productive university industry linkages? Now that we know, if I were you, I will go now to concert and quote this person himself, isn't it? The person that we have quoted here, isn't it? Say, we read your word, blah, blah, that we are from Park, we want to do. Because now that you are addressing what he said, you will feel shy to refuse, isn't it? <laughs> so again, we are saying, two are better than one. That's again the teachings of this in this uh, university. How about using our strength the maximum to minimize the threats? And we're saying create now what we've been talking about, the TTOs, isn't it? Let let Buanagami have a desk with a secretary to be liaising with the keep your office, isn't it? And then it comes, and then our faculty are introduced to it, and then as we go in class, we now, you know, these girls are patenting, they have already applied for the patenting of their whatever. Because I'm using that kind of thing. And again, Proverbs tells us that. And lastly, mini, mini, we want to minimize both the weaknesses and the threats. Why don't we collaborate our sister USA, that's something the strength what blah blah. All those are a skeleton of what I would say some of the strategies that we can use. And the best strategy comes come from where what you have. And are not thinking up there. So for that matter, and since we have um, our students here, I want us my parting shot. So Professor, what do you do for a living? What? I want to know what professors do for a living. I want to mold young minds and create knowledge for a living. There is something wrong with you. I want to be a professor someday. Oh, okay, well then prepare yourself. Yes, I am in graduate school. No, that is not what I mean. I mean prepare yourself. How can I prepare? I am eager to prepare. What should I do? Just tell me and I will do it. Well, to start, learn how to write an APA. APA, what is that? APA, another psychotic annoyance. I mean the American Psychological Association citation style. Okay, I can do that. What else? Learn to go to bed at 3 a.m. I do this already. I like to go to bed late. I am a night owl. Perfect. Just add that you need to wake up at 6 to write. P.M.? 
A.M. Oh. You will write and write and write and get rejected and rejected and rejected. And then finally someone would be merciful and accept your paper after multiple revisions just so you can list it on your Vita. How exciting, but what will I write about? I have a dog. He is so cute. Can I write about my dog? No, are you crazy? What is wrong with you? You have to write something that adds to the knowledge base. Something new, provocative and interesting that furthers your research area. What? Oh, never mind. You will write journal articles, conference proposals, and grants. Just keep writing and writing and writing and writing and when you are not writing, think about what you will write. Oh. Then there is teaching. I can teach. You think you can teach? I can. So you think, you don't know until you get your evaluations back. Oh. Then there is service. What is that? Committee meetings, dissertation committees, master's committees. If there is something to do that requires sitting or standing and discussing excruciating details for hours on end or listening to someone else do that, that is service. Anything else? Yes. Make sure you work a minimum of 90 hours a week. Well, at least professors get very high salaries for all those hours they put in. And they are highly recognized and respected by all. Were you dropped as a child? What? No. I don't think so. Leave me alone. I need to go right. <laughs> so, I have finished. You can reach me, I have my website there. I have my YouTube there. And I am now serializing on this Elim TV, if you can read it. I'm talking about tips on how to do research. Because I've found that quite a number of us may require those tips. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the matter that I could share with you. Thank you. Thank you for listening.